I was told to use some self-control, one of the fruits of the Spirit, while I'm doing this introduction. <laughs> Father Alberto is the pastor of St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Saginaw. He was an associate to our pastor here at Blessed Sacrament, where he was part of the Youth to Youth Retreat Team. And one of the things I remember most about Father Alberto is his reverence for the Eucharist and beginning his homilies with my friends, and he didn't even know us. <laughs> he specializes in spirituality and canon law. He is kind, welcoming, and funny. I can honestly say that he is a man who embodies the fruit of the Spirit. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. When I was at the seminary, I would never thought I'd have to do a presentation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you think about, okay, I'm going to go and teach Bible or catechism and work with the youth, but never thought about I'm going to do a presentation on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. My presentation is going to be based, the first part, we are going to reflect on the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. 1 to 11, that will be the first part. And then the second part, we are going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit based on Pope Francis' reflection that he did a catechist in uh, 2014, being a Pope. You know that every Wednesday he always does a catechist, so that's what he did. I think that's very ground to earth and, and bring into the practice. So that's why um, I pick and choose uh, my main presentation on him. I also, you see the Holy Spirit? No? I'm going to start with uh, how my professor at the seminary uh, began his class on Trinity. Trinity is about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, as he was about to explain about the, the persons, because there are one but three persons, he always complained about why and how the Catholic Church ended now having the Holy Spirit in representation as a dog. He said, no. He got even mad and, and angry. Why we ended up doing the representation of the, the most beautiful part of the Holy Trinity as a dog? <laughs> and trust me, I have it in my church. I hated it. <laughs> but, we got to work from that because when uh, he was explaining that, that makes sense. How the church is saying, okay, there are three persons in one God, and here we got an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So we got to work from that, that, okay, there is one God, three persons. I cannot tell you because he couldn't either to let us know how that will be a good representation of the Holy Spirit. But we, uh, that's one is, this is one of my first heresies. But that's the truth, and I think that he got the point because how we are going to say three persons and then the representation of the Holy Spirit is adult. That's why I said, okay, I know this is going to take us because it's centuries and centuries that we have seen this in churches, but I agree with him and I don't like the representation of the Holy Spirit as a dog. As a person, yes. That's the first thing. Rediscovering the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How are we going to do this? This is the first part. Remember that John, uh, John 23rd, uh, Pope John 23rd, when he got into the Vatican, he says, we have to open the doors, the windows of the church in order that new earth come, comes into our church. And that's why he says, okay, we got to do something. We got to do a council called Vatican. And he got many people around the world, almost bishops and patriarchs and different denominations. He got, St. Peter's Basilica got almost 3,000 people working. 
to have a word for the church. So in 1968, in July, they say, okay, what will be the church and our people without the Holy Spirit? What will be? And he goes, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, God is far from us. God is away from us. That's one thing. If we don't have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Christ stays in the past. You know, just a man who died, but didn't do anything. He stays in the past. It's like a historical book. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, the gospel is dead a letter. This dead doesn't make sense to us. That's why for those who claim that don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, they say, no, just a scientific book. Or maybe it's just a poem book because the gospel become a dead man. If we don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the church is just an organization. When ONG, just an organization. The authority serves only to dominate, only to have power. If we don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. The apostleship is seen like a, a propaganda, like a commercial. If we don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, the cult, the, everything that we do every weekend, is a way of evocation, just to evoke something that was in the past. That's what happened in 1968 when they met, they got together. Now, what happened when we got the, the Holy Spirit? Christ is present, and we make Him present among people that we meet every single day, with our families, with our friends, with our community. The gospel, the gospel is capacity of life. <coughs> why? Because when we read the gospel, it's God. that's why you say, you say, you know, oh, the gospel today is talking to me. Oh, Jesus is saying to me this or that. We make it alive. The church signifies community. Don't we love that word, just community? When we gather together, you know, we gather together, you know, <laughs> community. Authority serves in freedom. You know, it's not just to dominate, okay? I got the power. Everything is my way of the highway. No, it's in freedom. And mission is a new Pentecost. That's why always Pope Francis is talking about the church needs a new Pentecost. Liturgy is seen as a memorial and anticipation. It's not just something that happened 2,000 years ago, no, it's a memorial, anticipation of the eternal liturgy. That's the opening for the 1968 Council while they were reflecting on the why it's important to have the Holy Spirit in our lives and why it's not important, and why it's important to live our lives with the Holy Spirit. That's absolutely possible. I don't know why it's... Absolute Apostle 2, 1, 11. But before that, I want to share my personal experience of the how the Holy Spirit uh, worked in my life. And it came in a, no in a beautiful way, you know, like just in a garden, no. It came in a really difficult day, uh, day in of my life. And it was in May uh, 19, 20, 21. I was in Rome and my dad was dying. I talked to him on, on Sunday and he died Wednesday. Uh, 12.50 in the morning. So I flew from Rome to Colombia and uh, thank God I didn't have a cell phone signal. Thank God I didn't have Wi-Fi in my flight because I would be crazy just texting. It's going to make it before I, I get there. 
then I was it. So when I got to Panama, I got a signal and a Wi-Fi when I text my, my nephew how things go. And no, he's, he's still uh, alive and he's, I think he's waiting for you. So and then 45 minutes from Panama to Colombia. Then I got to my home and everybody, there were like 20 people in my home. But thank God he died in his home. And uh, I talked to him before his passing. And after his last breath, uh, everybody started clapping and saying hallelujah because he moved on into a, a new life. But some of them they were crying, everybody was crying, you know, my mom and embracing my mom, having my mom and thought, I'm going to be here for you, blah, blah, blah. But my feeling was, once his spirit moved out from his heart, even being around 20, 25 people, because we have seven in my family, seven brothers and, and four brothers and three sisters, good Catholic family. <laughs> and my feeling was, even around that many people, mm -hmm. once his spirit went out, I felt the house empty. The loneliness of the house was amazing. I, I couldn't, even I got my mom, I got, I'm so close to my mom, as you know, I call her every day. But I, the house was just empty. Since that point, I understood we got a spirit, we got soul. Without it, we cannot live. Without it, you won't be here. Without the gift of the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us to walk. Because the soul is the one who gives the, us the life that is in us. Since the one understood, okay, we got the Spirit. Before, yes, being a priest, I know, but that was the, like the trigger for me to understand and to believe we are more, we are in this place for somehow, but we are for God. We are here because we need to get to heaven. Because we got the Holy Spirit, it's that you're here, I'm here, and I became priest. Without, I don't know what will be. So that was my, my story. The second part is Acts of the Apostles. We are going to read that and then we are going to do a reflection on it. Because the Acts of the Apostles is the one that gives us how the church began. The Acts of the Apostles is like a, the one that gives us, okay, this is how we started it. This Gospel is read on Pentecost. So we are going to read, when the time of, for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. So let us see what was Pentecost 2,000 years ago. Pentecost was a time of harvest where all went together and make bread and give and they gave thanks to God for the whole because the whole year they got something to it. It became for them like a Thanksgiving. That was the Thanksgiving for them. Because they were able to see, okay, God has been good to us so much that this is the time for us to give thanks to Him. That was the Pentecost, one part. But the other part was, they celebrated the holiness of God. Just know, okay, I'm gonna give thanks to God because He has given me this and that, but they celebrated because God was holy. They celebrated. The other point that we're gonna say, who were there? You see, they were all. It didn't say only the disciples were there, 
for Mary was that all of them were in one place together. So there was the disciples, Mary, Magdalene, and women, all were there in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind. He gave us like a the, the sign, what was the Holy Spirit. But he says, you see, a noise like a strong driving wind. He doesn't say a noise driving wind. He says like. What does it mean? It's not because what the gospel, the evangelist, Luke, because Luke was the one who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, remember it's like a, the same part of the, uh, of the, of the Luke book, Luke, uh, the gospel of Luke. So now, what the evangelist wanted was, I don't want it that the people focus on the wind, instead focusing on the Holy Spirit. Because you see, okay, how the wind, you know, you see the leaves and everything coming down, but you don't see it. You just feel it. You just feel the wind, the wind but you don't see it. So that's why he says, like. And he filled the entire house in which they were. He filled the entire house. Well, did they say, all were there, I think that that's not going to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be just for this part. I'm going to send some of the Holy Spirit here. I made it there. I will send it tomorrow. No. <laughs> no. All of them were there. Then there appeared to them tons of fire. That's the other sign, fire. Why? Because fire transforms everything. So we hear like a fire kills everything. <laughs> Because fire kills our bad things that we have, but also gives no transformation for our lives. That's the fire. The, that's, the, that, that's the sign. So two signs. The wind, but also it says, S of fire. It's just a big shiny light in the S of fire. Which parted and came to the rest of each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. They spoke in different languages. Because at the end of the, uh, of the book, you're going to hear how, how the, those tongues got together because they came from different places. So, when he says, you know, the fire also represents, you know, you remember the Moses, the burning bush, uh, bush. also God in the Mount Sinai, in God's voice. So, all the real miracles of Pentecost is found in the transformation of the apostles. That is the biggest miracle, how they were transformed by the Holy Spirit. Oops. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were confused. But let us think about why they were confused. Remember, they were with the disciples, with the apostles. People were, a lot of crowd was there. But they had lost the one that they were walking along with. So imagine just hearing a wind, then the fire. And then people talking in different languages. That to be confused. I would be confused. Okay, the one that said to us, you know, I'm gonna walk along with you, I'm gonna free you from slavery, is gone. 
they were confused and they were speaking in his own language. What does it mean when they spoke in different languages? Okay, some of them they were speaking the language of love, the language language of kindness, forgiveness. That's the languages. That's different when it happened in the Babel Tower. Here they got together to speak even in different languages, but they worked together with the Holy Spirit. In Bible was just they wanted to show power that they were bigger than God. In this one, no. With this one, they were speaking their own language, but as a transformation of their own thinking life. They were standard and amazing. They asked. Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? For Persians, Medes, and Remais, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, they were, that represents the entire world. But remember that America wasn't conquered yet, so the entire world back there, you know? So that represents that, and also the language is, okay, those who were not ready to receive the Holy Spirit also spoke their own language. But that was not the only time that the Holy Spirit came into that community. I was found in the community in Jerusalem is God to for prayer and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 4 31. Because when we pray as a community, the Holy Spirit is with us and within us. The other time was the Spirit comes upon believers in Samaria when Peter and John lay hand on them. The Spirit falls upon the Gentiles, Cornelius and his household in Caesarea Philippi. And also the spirit that they sent some 12 believers in Ephesus. So we always got the Holy Spirit working in our own communities, for our own lives and for our own church, but also with this first part, I want to leave you like a, let us think about it. What kind of language are you speaking? I'm not asking you Spanish, Italian, no. When Jesus, when the Gospel of Luke is talking about languages, what kind of language do you speak today? Don't say, no, uh, in 2021 I was so kind. No, today. <laughs> Maybe not today. <laughs> what kind of language are you speaking to your own kids? To your own family? to your wife, to your husband. That's what we make real, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes we are so kind with those that don't, don't live with us, 724. <laughs> but how about those that we live together, 724? They were speaking in their own tongues, of the Almighty God. So today, yes, I'll, I'll, maybe you are saying, ah, he's not saying nothing new. But what I'm, I'm going to challenge you is like a, when you get out here, keep working. If there is something in your family, some language that you shouldn't speak with your wife, or oh, son of the father, you know? Oh, when you don't understand it, sure. How about you ask for the gift of understanding? And that's the second part that we're going to see. But for us to understand that like, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not up, up here. No, we have to incarnate it. We have to make it real here and there. Because they look so beautiful in the Bible <laughs> or in the Catechism. They can kiss him. So let us think about what kind of language are you speaking?
for us to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have to see for men and women to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have to see Christ in his humanity. Receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. As a God, he received Father, Son. As a human, he received the fullness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so to see and understand what the Holy Spirit wants to do in us, we have to see what he did in the person of Christ. In order for us to see how the Holy Spirit is going to work in my life and within me, we have to see what he did in the person of Christ. One of the great theologians from, uh, from Colombia, he says, sometimes we focus only on miracles, curing the blind and doing this, especially the one, you know, the water became white and everything, you know. And we don't focus on obedience. And he says, that's the best miracle of Jesus. Obedience. That's the perfect miracle. But because what he did was just being obedient to his father. And what he did was in he did in ordinary life extraordinary things. Why? Because obedience. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, yeah, because obedience, that's the best miracle of it. He, said, he even says, you know what, to me, he didn't do any extraordinary thing. What he did was obedience. And with that, what else we can win? Obedience. So what we have to be is desire to be moved by the Holy Spirit. Because I can bring you Pope Francis to do this kind of case, hopefully he comes. <laughs> but if you are not open and desire to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're not gonna get it. So let us think about during the break. If you have questions, Google it. <laughs> no, that's a joke. <laughs> Let us think about how God is speaking to you today. And how God is challenging you today. I think I'm good for today. So with this, we finish in, uh, and then we begin uh, figuring out the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, it shall be world of God. Amen. In Espanol. <laughs> Hello, uh, thank you so much for your presentation, Father. Um, it was very inspiring, and I have uh, more, more than a question is a comment or a reflection to see what you think, maybe what everybody else thinks. When the Holy Spirit descended on Pentecost, there was this image, right? Like the wind and then as a fire. And I have had a reflection, and maybe some people may have that and coincide with me, that maybe that was a sound coming from inside of the people. When we are stirred and moved by the motion or the movement of the Holy Spirit, our souls tend to produce a wow, like in many moments when you feel that presence and then you are inspired and you have this kind of fire within you. So I have heard that image that maybe there was this moment of a communal, wow, and that inspired them to move forward. So I wanted to see what you think. Yes, it can be both, you know, or how they were so deep into the prayer in that moment that they, everybody got a different experience, you know? Oh, I felt it like a fire, you know? 
within my within my heart, you know. Oh, I felt like uh, like the wind, you know. That's why he says like. He doesn't know I felt a wind inside of me. So it can be both because some different uh, different actors, I think, also. Or Pope Francis says about that, like to experience the gift of the Holy Spirit is coming first within inside of us. And I think I, I agree with you too. I, uh, it can be all something that they experience inside of them. They say, okay, it was like. Because remember that uh, Luke wasn't there writing, okay, how are you feeling? <laughs> No, remember that the, the word of God was first spoken. That's why, okay, I felt like this. And it was, I was praying with Mary, Joseph, Mary Magdalene, and this and that. And I felt this. I just wanted to thank you for talking about how are we speaking in the Spirit. Because I think our generation and the younger generation of today were somewhat sometimes apart from each other. Uh, many of us have grown children that don't attend church anymore. So how we speak with them and how we come across to them is so important because we're culturally divided. And, and that's difficult for all of us right now. So I'm struggling with how do I share that spiritual depth to people I love dearly who are no longer a part of the church. So I'm mulling over that. <laughs> and I would love to hear your suggestions about how you would approach something like that. You're in a situation with someone you love who is no longer Christian, Catholic, might even be a little bit resistant and angry about it. It's nothing new. I know it's been this way for years that we've had these experiences even in Christ's time. But it's a challenge. I think that the best way for us to share the gifts is with our own life, the way that you live. Because you are asking your kids or your grandkids, do this, but you are mistreating them. That's not right. I think that that's what St. Francis says, you know, preach every day. If necessary, use words. So you preach every day with your own words, with your own actions, I mean, with your own actions. That's the best way. Because sometimes, you know, you, you come to Mass every weekend. I, when I was home, I, was, I went to Mass and then went back home, fight with my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom used to say, hey, you just came out of Mass. So you gotta practice what you that's why practice what you celebrate and live what you also celebrate. That's why the Eucharist, I think I was Jean Paul II, he says you gotta celebrate the Eucharist, participate in the Eucharist, but also live out the Eucharist. You gotta live it out. And I think that's the best way. You gotta go out home today and show you, you know, I yeah, like they give you the understanding, you know, you know. Our time is gonna come to you when you are facing problems and situations at home. You are able to know and to understand what she or he is going through. Anybody else? Yes. He does. But sometimes they don't want to acknowledge and recognize it. That's different. But he can enter anywhere. He's God. He's Almighty. He got the power. That's why it's hard for me to, um, to understand like a, an atheist. Uh, they might, but uh, they even need God to deny that there is no God. <laughs> because if I don't, I don't know, Miss Smith, how can I say that she doesn't exist? But they even need God to say uh, the God doesn't exist. It's not interesting. So God works in mysterious ways. 
And remember uh, that our DNA is already divine. Believe it or not, or like it or not. That's why when we help people, you know, oh, my son and daughter doesn't come to church. One day they will come. Or even, in, it doesn't have to be just coming to Catholic church. <laughs> I mean, when they are dying, they repent. <clears throat> because our DNA is already divine. Anybody else? And remember that, that uh, going back to your question, the Holy Spirit came over all of them. He didn't say he came to the Catholic family here, to the Blessed Sacrament people, and then, oh, but it doesn't come to the St. Francis of Assisi. No, to all of them. Our point is, you want to believe it, or you want to acknowledge, that's the but he comes to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> now the second part is about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know. Uh, there are seven. But just a little bit uh, history. In the prophet Isaiah, I think it's chapter 11, only mentions six. And, uh, but Jerome, that was the one who translated the, the Bible, he put uh, another one, I think I was piety of counsel. So the church, through the whole history, carried out with that, but in the prophet Isaiah only mentions six uh, gifts. But we are gonna see today seven because I am so kind, so, <laughs> so we want to see the gift of wisdom. Why? It says to taste, because in Latin it's like a sapere, sapia, it's like a to taste. To taste the goodness of God, the divine gifts of God. But also is we surrender to a contemplative practice and open up a space for God. Especially Catholic, we are so good. When we pray, we just come with the our grocery list. <laughs> I need this, I need that, blah, 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 tomatoes, potato, blah. <laughs> but we don't open up our hearts for God. To, to hear, okay, what do you want from me? Where did you want me to go? Open up our hearts to God. Knowing in love. Because that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Knowing in love. The Holy Spirit opens our hearts, souls, and minds to feel and experience God's love. How many of you have experienced God's love? I think everybody have experienced God's love. It gives us the capacity to see through the lens of God. Imagine how our, our experience with God is when we are able to, to see through the lens of God. And when we are allowing God to do that, there is no more judgment, prejudice, and kindness, and forgiveness. Because we are seeing through the lens of God. So that is wisdom. Also, wisdom is more mobile than any emotion because of her pureness. Remember that wisdom is, is a female. She pervades and penetrates asking things, for it is a bread of the power of God and pure emanation of the glory of the might. Therefore, nothing defiled against entrance into her, for she is a reflection of eternal life and a spotless mirror of the working of God and image of his goodness. All the seven gifts are uh, taken from the reflection, as I told you before, St. Francis, uh, Pope Francis. So wisdom is to bring of the power of God. I think all of us, we need to work on that. For one, to see through the lens of God. 
Number two, to love as God loves us. And number three, to bring the power of God. That power is not just to dominate. That power that makes us to become like Jesus, being obedient. How many of you, if you don't go to confession, but listen to confess to God? I'm being disobedient this week. We don't hear that, only for kids. <laughs> and they don't the first Holy Communion. I'm obedient to my mom and dad. But we don't say, you know, God, I, I've been obedient this week to you. Wisdom. Understanding. Internal love of understanding God, it helps us to go deep in the mystery of God. How to understand God? Understand it gives us a compassion for ourselves and others. As an example, somebody else is in drug or problem with alcohol, to understand how to help those to move from that particular situation. It's not just to understand the gospel, but to understand our own lives and the lives of others. It requires self-reflection, self-love, and compassion for others. So being human is when God in me recognizes God in the others. And understanding gives us the ability to understand God and to accept people just as they are. To listen to their stories and challenges. As they are, not as they, I wanted them to be. But as they are, and also as God wanted them to be. That's understanding. That's the characteristics of understanding. So we have some uh, scripture based, Romans 15, 15. I myself am convinced about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. It's not just because this. Four ones, wisdom, um, understanding, and also knowledge. They go with the reason. That's why it's said knowledge, understanding. They go from here to the heart. But the other one goes with the will, counsel, piety. A scripture base. Knowledge. It helps us to judge the world of value. It discovers the beauty of God in our brothers and sisters. It is a step to reach out to God. Knowledge gives us the capacity to see our strengths and weaknesses. Capacity to see our daily jobs as a place which I can experience God. Knowledge. So capacity to judge the beauty and the ugly. <coughs> love and love, kindness and kindness, forgiveness and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And also capacity to see our daily jobs as a place which I can experience God. There is a high percentage of, in the United States that they hate their job. There's a high. They don't want to go to work. They just hate it. So we have to ask him for that gift of knowledge to see in our daily jobs for people that we meet every single day or we work with them every single day as an experience of God. Knowledge. What the scripture? Elizabeth received the notes of the mystery that Humanly speaking, she will never be able to understand the incarnation of Jesus. The imagine a 14 years old, just, you know, you're going to be the mother of God. 
the Udu of God. You're gonna have a baby. Ah, uh, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but this no Elizabeth was the John the Baptist. Sorry about that. So John the Baptist, imagine just she was I think over 40 years. But she was able to grasp it, understand, because they gave her knowledge that no human in the human logic won't be able to explain it. The word knowledge came to, with a physical signal, the baby, John the Baptist. Just know, you know, you want to have a baby, okay? Nine months, you don't see it. Ten months, you don't see it. No. The signal is the baby. A Samaritan woman, she sees him as a prophet. She opens her heart to him. You know that she got uh, five husbands. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> deal with it. But in order for her to understand that Jesus was open, his heart for her was to the gift of knowledge. Something coming from above. And she understood, okay, not just as a prophet, but a man coming from God. Counsel. It defines a right judgment. The Spirit is a gift of counsel, puts into perspective the good roads before us with different directions. One, clarity to see the things of God. God is our biggest consoler, and through our ignorant divine spark of willing, up of sensation, emotions, and thoughts, that guides us to understand ourselves and others. It helps us to make decisions in communion with God and according to Jesus' logic. You know, sometimes, how many times you have been asked, oh, I need to give me advice. I have this situation. How can I deal with that? Ask God for the gift of counsel to, to judge right now. Ask God to give you clarity when the things are dark. When there is darkness in my heart and my soul and my mind, ask God for the counsel, you know? I need that counsel. I need to judge this situation the way that you will judge. What would Jesus do? Those are, those are the characteristics. The Spirit helps us to grow and live in community, in intimacy with God and listen to His Word. Little by little, we put aside our personal logic, impose most of the time our prejudice, our prejudice, and our ambitions, and we learn instead to ask the Lord, what is your wish? What do you want? What is your way? What do you like? The Lord speaks to us through the voices and testimonies of our brothers and sisters. How many times we get that, you know? How many times we see, you know, the Lord has spoken to me through this person. She said this, I never heard, or maybe you have heard, but it comes here and goes this way. So how many times we got the experience for any people, any person at work, here at the community, at the parish, to see the voices and testimonies of our brothers and sisters. <clears throat> One thing I have is I can recognize who got who got God in their lives. It's easy. It's easy for us to see something. No, that's not. Easy. It's easy for us to see. Who got the gifts of the Holy Spirit? It's easy to see and to understand who got God in their lives. Because the way that we talk, the way that, that we treat people, that makes us to see, okay, do I have God in my life? Do I have God in my life today? Let us ask God for that gift. I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to be with you forever. I bless the Lord who counsels me, 
Even at night, my heart exhorts me. Even at night. Ayo. Ayo, there's no jazz. You've been here five days. Just go by. Oh, he's so far. It's not at all. Pope Francis, put in a good way. It is in the case of our belonging to God and our deep bound with Him. Our deep bound. That's why the uh, the prophets they understood the desert. They moved to the desert as a time of day, a day in time with God. It's a bound of God. They went to the desert. Jesus went to the desert. It's a, a day in time, like a, when you went out with your girlfriend and boyfriend. A day in time with him. A bound. That's why it gives us meaning to our whole life that keeps us firm in communion with Him, even in the most difficult moments. It is a relationship lived with our hearts. The gift of piety means being truly capable of rejoicing with those who experience joy. Pope Francis said that, crying with those who cry, being close to those who are alone, or this in distress, correcting those who are in error, consoling those who are afflicted, welcoming and helping those who are in need. You cannot find it in any book more basic than this. The gift of piety. Being with the ones who are rejoicing. Being with the ones who are in sudden and difficult moments of life, that is piety. In other words, we have to incarnate the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit of God as children of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you receive a spirit of adoption through which we cry above Father. Fourth, capacity to face difficult situations in our daily lives. Fourth, today's strength of the heart, the ordinary rhythm of our daily life. It helps us to recognize that God is always there. The gift of fortitude to is a divine spirit of supernatural habit that strengthens us and strengthens the Christian so that by the work of the Holy Spirit, he can exercise the virtue of fortitude with easy, speed, and perfection, thus managing to overcome all the adversaries of this world with invisible confidence. How many of us, we should pray for that? The fortitude. The fortitude that we always need, even when you, you see this political party is fighting with this, and the other one is fighting with this, but the other one wants this. We need to see that God is always there for us. It's that sometimes we as Christians, not just Catholic, we forget that evil cannot be here. God got power over him. But sometimes we emphasize more in the evil than the goodness of God. And sometimes we just see in everything evil. In everything. Instead of saying, God has power. He's always there for me. The scripture, I have, I have the strength of, for everything through Him who empowers me. Who empowers me. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, God is with us. Let's think about Mother Teresa. How many times she was in distress? 40 years in distress. And everybody knows. Mother Teresa, everybody, 
the entire world knows who she was, but at the end, she got to ask God for 40. Ah, oh, you don't like that one, but I'm sorry. You don't like this one, but fear of the Lord. It would be much easier in Spanish to say that is no having fear of the Lord because in Spanish we say fear. We cannot say fear to the Lord. The miedo a Dios, no fear to the Lord, no. Fear of the Lord is different than fear to the Lord. So it is about thinking that this don't kill me, kill Pope Francis. <laughs> because he was the one who says this. What is fear of the Lord? And I think that we are going to understand this. Fear of the Lord is about thinking what God thinks of me. Rather than what the world thinks of me. You should be, okay, I don't care who you think about me. I care what God thinks of me. It's like how we compare ourselves, you know. I'm going to compare myself to some of you, uh, be a holy person. But I compare myself to God, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We'll be in trouble. That's why we have to think what God is thinking of me today, 2023. Know what the world is thinking about me. Fear of the Lord is when my life becomes life in God. That my life is God. Everything I do is God. My morals are God, nothing else. It is unconditional love of God that allows us to see God, the world, without fear. This game reminds us how small we are, but how great is the love of God for us. There is a group that makes us convinced that enthusiastic Christians who do not remain submissive to the Lord out of fear, but because they are moved and conquered by His love. In other words, it's thinking about what He's thinking about me, how the love of God is in me, and how can I share that love with one another? That's the fear of the Lord. No, I won't read this one. No, that's not the meaning of this. I'm so afraid of God. No. That was in the Old Testament. But the great with Jesus Christ present is different. He changed the entire history. How can we say that we have we got fear of the Lord if we call him Father? You don't call your father you have fear of him. Psalm 34. This poor one cried out, and the, and the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he saves them. with these two questions, you know. When we incarnate the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's because we see Jesus as a person or we see him as just as a character. How do you see Jesus? Jesus as a character, we just talking about him. In the past, you know, oh, he did this. He was obedient. He transformed the water into wine. How nice he was, you know. How kind. Talking about him. <clears throat> a character is just in a movie. He is playing a role. 
Dan Cross is playing a, it's a Batman or whatever, you know, <laughs> the movie. He's playing like him, but he is not him. He's playing just a character, a role. But when we see Jesus as a person, that's when we are talking with him. I'm talking with him. I'm not playing a role. I'm talking with him. I'm walking along with him. You know, the rose is more real than the character. Just the science movies, you know. That movie is just playing a role. So, I want to leave you with this question when you go home. Do I see Jesus just as a character, of, like a movie, or as a person? Amen. I must have missed it. What was the scripture? It was Isaiah you said, but I didn't hear it. It's 11. Thank you. I hear, I see people nodding and they want someone to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. They're very good questions. I was interested when you were reading about the voices and the tissimentment months. <laughs> I forget how you didn't read it very well. About our brothers and sisters you were talking about. And so to me, our brothers and sisters are everybody around the world. How do we, as our journey at this understanding in the world, how many people are losing their lives? And of course, they've lost, people have lost lives around the world over the years. But to me, it's so much more important at this point to understand how we are meant to, um, who are our brothers and sisters and what does that mean about how we treat people, not just our neighbors and people in this country, but how do we help with people around the world with our spiritual journey? Okay. I think everybody got a, a portion to work with. Like, for example, for me, uh, I got the portion of San Francisco of Assisi Parish. I had to work and bring people to God from that place, you know? And being and seeing them as my brothers and sisters, and listening to their complaints and sorrows, the struggles, difficulties, weaknesses, that portion. But. But Rob here is doing his own job. You at home, you gotta do your own job because, for example, I cannot be in London, which I would like to, but, <laughs> but I cannot be in two places at the same time. But you do your work, and everybody does their work in the work in the place that they are, the world will be different. We will see people and as a brothers and sisters, but because God knows that we cannot one person cannot do it all. Just, the, just you see the structure of the church. We got the Pope, the bishops, and priests, lay people, but everybody do their work in their own place where they are. So when we do with the, in our inner space, we say, okay, I'm doing this. You are doing your job in your own personal space, okay? That's, that's the way that we see it. And then you will see people around the world as brothers and sisters. Even if you don't meet them, but you see them in that way. So my question is, the way I'm understanding it, and I could be wrong, but when you say, fear of God. That's why we want to be um, with him. 
that's why I, uh, that's why I'm understanding it. But I think the way I see it is the love of God and the love for God is why you want to be His disciple because. One of, and I say that because I don't know what it's called, an anagram or whatever. It's a false evidence appearing real, and if he and if he's a false evidence appearing real, then I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you know, it's like I'm uh, it's like I'm loving something that's not real. So that's why I don't quite understand fear of the Lord is why if I'm understanding it correctly, what you're saying. Well, uh, who has made God real? Who makes it real? Who has made it real? Jesus first. Because remember that he said, our Father is real. He won't say our Father, he didn't know him, but he makes it real. Now, how can we make him real? So the, the gift of fear is not just, uh, and I think everybody got this, it's not just shaking and I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna meet God today, I'm gonna shake. No, no, that's not the point. The point is like, uh, okay, bringing that love that God has given you, bring it to your heart, and then share the love of God from one another. It's not just like, could we get the ears, but because from Latin to English is really poor translation. That's the, the hard part. I'm sorry, but it's a very poor translation. So that's why you get like a fear, like a shaking, like a, I don't want to meet him because I don't know what he will say to me. I don't know what he will ask me. No, it's understanding that meeting him and being with him, he's going to pour out in me the love of God, his love. And when I got that love in my heart and my soul, I will be able to share with one another. Thank you. The second half help clear that clarify that for me so we were just talking at the table here would a better word be awe or respect for god as opposed to fear because you you, you mentioned things like uh how small we are and um how unconditionally we love god there's a little bit of trembling, but it's a sense of awe and incredible respect. I know this is a trivial example, but I remember the, uh, the Tin Man, the, uh, the Lion, and, uh, and uh, Judy Garland <laughs> coming to see the wizard. They were all quivering and shaking, but they knew this was a big, powerful wizard, so they were kind of quote, afraid of him, maybe. But it was more out of respect and awe and wonder about what they were going to see. Uh, he's not God, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe the word awe or respect. Well, uh, be but uh, we go again like the translation. It's no big because the, from Latin to English. It's, that's the point. It's not like I once again. It's not the fear. That the way that you understand fear in the English word is not the, that word. No, it's because that translation we lose in translation from Latin to English. Thank you for your coming. Father Alberto, when we would teach the second graders, when we did confirmation and restored order, we actually would say this gift is also called the gift of wonder and awe. So it's just another way to help it. Another way to say it. Yeah. And so when you guys get your little sheets that you'll take home with you today, so all of you who are having fear about the idea of fear of the Lord, <laughs> it also says it's also called the gift of wonder and awe. So you can just uh -huh. melt that together with all the wonderful things Father has said to you. So that was just a little clarifying thing. Anybody else? I just wanted to comment that I had a um, director of religious ed in the parish I was at before. She um, talked to her about the gifts of spirit as puff whack. That's how the kids remember it. Piety, understanding, fortitude, fortitude, wisdom, awe, counsel, knowledge. And sometimes the Holy Spirit comes as a puff, and sometimes he comes as a whack. <laughs> Someone is matching your humor. <laughs> I 
it's not a question, it's more of a conundrum, I think. So, the Spirit descended upon everybody at Pentecost. And then when we are baptized, we are clothed by the Spirit. So the Spirit is already in us. But then we ran into problems, and so we ask for specific gifts of the Spirit. But we ask the Holy Spirit to give us the wisdom to know what to ask, which gifts to send by the Spirit who's already in us. So it was just this been rolling around in my head that it is we don't even have the least bit of power or say because we ask the Spirit for his gifts from the one who's already in us. And uh, I guess that just dawns on me how dependent we are, truly, on the providence of God so that we can walk in the way. So that's just my crazy, that's good. crazy thought. That's good thought. Yeah, because remember that we have not done. How many, we were uh, almost, we, all, all of us we were in, uh, in our, our mom's womb, nine months. Then we start eating, eating inside and then outside, and then start walking and this and that. We have not done. It's a process. Because Trinity is a mystery. It's a mystery that we won't understand with the human logic. Just when we got there, it's okay. Okay, where is, the, where is Jesus? Where is the dove? <laughs> where is this? Where is the Father? No, because we, we are in, in a process. And we will understand until we die, basically. Because as a human logic, it's, it's hard to understand that, that thing. Thank you for coming. Fortitude is one of the gifts, but fortitude is also a virtue. And I wondered if you might like to distinguish between, or how you would distinguish between the gifts and the virtues. What is a, vir a virtue for you? What is a virtue? What is a virtue for us? What would be a good uh, uh, meaning of virtue? Humility. Huh? Humility. That's um, positive things, you know, qualities, you know, um, characteristics. Characteristic. Great. Great. That's why we, I put that like a, like Pope Francis says, you know, the characteristics of the of the gifts. So virtue can be as a gift, but as a virtue too. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Because you got the virtue of Fortune to understand it. Virtue is something positive. You won't hear the virtue of drinking. No, you never hear that. <laughs> oh no, you got the virtue of drinking. No, virtue is something positive. Something good that we have, we have in our hearts and minds. Anybody else? What does it mean when you get the call of the Holy Spirit? Is it a feeling? Is it a knowledge? Is it an action? What is it? It's a feeling. Feeling like just in your mind and in your heart? Because I've had feelings like right like warmth in the middle of your heart, right for no reason, maybe like you're in church or something like that. What's this? It's a feeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I can add to that, I think for me, um, it comes in as a thought. 
and then I decide whether or not I want to move. So I think it can be a thought, a feeling, and just a nudge to go, what just happened there? I, you know, why did I move to that person? So I think it's three centered. Yeah, the, it begins here. That's why the, the four ones, the four gifts, comes from the reason, the other ones from the will. Basically, it involves all senses. It gives, involves all senses. Father, there's so much evil in our world right now. And we pray and pray and pray for this Holy Spirit to change the hearts. Do um, you think it's ever going to happen? Well, I believe in conversion, yes. But unfortunately, the evil works and God works. God doesn't stop nor the evil. And we always gonna have that. But we keep praying and praying and there are many beautiful conversions, but what we believe at the end he doesn't have the power. That's what we gotta keep in mind. Even we see it at the end he will be the winner. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> 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 so it's an honor for me to be here. I, I love this place. I love the place of sacrament. Oh yes. Um, I'd like to know um, if you can be filled with the Holy Spirit without baptism. God can work in mysterious ways. <laughs> and he can do it. I understand, but mm -hmm. I just I'm not a Catholic. And I'm attending today and I'm learning yeah. about your ways and several times I've been here. And our church, you don't have to be baptized to be filled with it, but I just was wondering what your answer was going to be. Remember that God got power for everything. It's not a human being. I'm going to give this package of wisdom, counsel to this person. I'm going to give this. No, he's the one who gives us all our gifts. Yes, in our Catholic faith have to say that we believe that through baptism and conversion, we receive the Holy Spirit. But God works, and even the Vatican too, God works and saves in a ways that you and me don't understand. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you all for asking such authentic and heartfelt questions. It's not easy to do that, and uh, I'm sure there are other people who want to ask questions, and there may be some time later on, but we're going to move on with our Let's do a little thank you for Father Alfred. No, thank you. And, uh, I love this place. I love the Blessed Sacrament. It's a pleasure and honor for me to be here. And uh, if I made any mistake with the presentation, blame the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> she was the one.
So take a little time. Yes. Individually, your box, and then we'll come back at, let's say, quarter after. Um, we'll come back and get back with our table groups at quarter after.